Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the channel. My name's Rodin. If you're new, welcome. In this episode, what we're going to be concentrating on is working out the spacing between this row and this row up here, where that uh, fascia is and where this fascia is. The difference between here and there has to work out tiles so we don't get an odd little weird cut or, well, it just can't work out odd where I should have the tiles will be in kink and it won't look good. So what we need to do is we're gonna get, I've got a few tiles here, a few nails, screwdriver, uh, not screwdriver, uh, hammer, saw, couple of battens, and the tape measure. Yeah, so we're gonna put one on the bottom. We've got the eaves tiles. I'll explain about the tiles in a minute. Eaves tiles and normal tiles. We're gonna set them out here, get the first couple of battens in place. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up there, do exactly the same thing here, up there, get a few tiles, set a few battens in place up there. And then we're gonna gauge between this one and this one and work out how many fit in the middle and then work that gauge out and that gauge is basically gonna follow all the way up. Cause from here on upwards, it doesn't really matter. But I'm testing out a new way of filming this as well, different settings. So let me know down in the comments if you like or don't like what you're seeing. So I know for future reference, whether I'll go back to the old way or keep doing it this way. What I'll do to set you up, we'll get this first section all done. Just get a few tiles put in there. Well, as you can see here, we have got the large tile on the top and we have the smaller tile underneath. Note that on the front edge, they are in line. Now, these are your normal standard plain tiles. These ones under the bottom, these are called eaves tiles. They're not gonna be put on like this. They are gonna be put on like that. So this gap here, any water that goes down this gap will run through to the tile underneath. Now we have this batten up here, which I haven't fixed yet, and I've worked out a spacing, but I need to do this up there before I put any of these down to make sure this spacing works. But the idea behind it is that this tile goes on like so, and if we had a cross section, so if I took this out, you can see that this top tile overlaps this bottom tile going over this one. Imagine this was butted up against. Any water that would run off here, that would go into that gap there, it wouldn't go through, straight through into the felt, like if there was nothing there. So the idea is to have this lapping over, not the bottom one, but the one down again by so much so that no water can get in there. Now, I've lapped this at the moment by 75 mil. I consulted the Bible, which we spoke about the other day, and it says to have a minimum of 63 mil and um, 75 mil in, I think it was exposed areas. So I thought I'll give it 75 mil because I know nothing's gonna get through that then. So I'm gonna test this idea out. These buttons here, they're 90 mil. So these are spaced 90 mil apart. I did read a comment a few videos ago about someone saying that you should always go top to top to cut out that discrepancy. A few mil over the whole roof could run it out. I'm not really bothered about a couple of mil going out all the way up, but let me know in the comments if I should be bothered. I've got all this set out. Like I said, this hasn't been nailed on. This is all set out with all these tiles. It goes all the way over to there. It's looking very nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these two uh, buttons up there, get them all in the right spot so we got this section, and then I'll come back and together we'll work out the gauging between these two points, and then I'm just gonna follow that gauge all the way up. There's no point in changing it because it'll look odd. I guys, right, we're back. Right, it's the next day. I had a few things to take care of yesterday after I put the camera down, so it's the next day. Right, we've got this set up. These buttons are all on. As you can see, I've been messing about with the tiles, getting it all right, so the distance between there and there is all sorted. Again, I still haven't nailed that down. Now what we've got to do is we've got a tape between the two. It's going to be out of these two closer together, it'll be the top one. So this one here against what the top one of those two there. So it'll be the top to the top. We measure that and then we divide it by this distance here from the top here to top here, which is uh, 112 mil, give or take. And if the outcome of that uh, equation doesn't come out to a full number or close enough to a full number, I'll have to do a bit of trial and error to make the distance as close to full tiles uh, as full tiles as possible. So this distance may expand or reduce a little bit. I'm not sure. So I'll get on the calculator and I'll do that now. Right, so we get the tape measure out and measure it. Right, so we go top to top, and that is two meters one hundred and twenty-four. So two meters one hundred and twenty-four. Now divide that by 
this size here, 128. And that gives me 16 and a half. So we have to do a bit of working out there, 16 and a half, so I don't want half tiles or a different lap. If we open that up a bit, let's say, let's do it to 132 and bang on. 16.009, so 16 courses. So that difference there is gonna be 132 millimeters. So I need to recut that, so it's 132. So that would be, right, that's 90 mil, so we need to have an extra four mil, so 94 mil, yeah, 94 mil. Right, okay, I'll cut some more of those and then we'll start running these up, basically. Now I've worked that out, I'll set you guys up and we'll just, peg get all these battens all the way up once we get up to that point i'll come back to you and we'll make sure everything's hunky dory make sure it turned out all right right so we haven't gone too far because i made a mistake somewhere along the line i made a bit of a cock up not exactly sure how i managed to do this but the lap is turned out to be pretty much zero so i'm not quite sure what happened there but I need to go back to the drawing board. Good thing I didn't go all the way up to the top. I've only just come to, well, to here really. Opening these up by, it was about four mil. I forget what it was, about four mil. Uh, that didn't really work. So I'm gonna have to come back down and work this out again, because there's certainly not a 63 mil lap there. This needs to be down here somewhere, or even about here. So I'll work out this little hiccup and come back to you and let you know what's been going on. Right, I've sorted it out. That was a lot harder than it should have been if I'd done what I just did to start. What I did was I had loads of tiles like this all set out and I measured the lap and all that on there and I just did it the hard way. And then that didn't work out properly. So what I did is I thought, oh bloody hell, I completely forgot. Cracked the old Bible out. In two minutes, it's got an equation that tells me how to do it. Simple. You guys could have told me that. Thanks for nothing, mate. So that was the easy way of doing it. Don't know why I didn't consult a Bible in the first place. Made that video the other day. Such a twat. Wasted about an hour trying to figure that out. Proper scratching my head. Oh yeah, got a bit hot under the collar, so took my t-shirt off. Yeah, summer's coming, mate. Summer's coming. Right, let me just show you this equation. So this is the page, page 59 of the Bible. And it says right here, gauge, length of lap, uh, length of tile, that to that take away the lap so obviously the 70 mil that we want and then divide that whole lot by two and it will give you give you what you need in this case it's 100 mil and in this case it's 98 mil so that for that center to center of the baton but I always like doing top to top rather than center to center because at least the has got something to hook on and that's saying that's on 99 mil but one mil between friends I'm sure we'll let that let that slide obviously I haven't nailed this one on yet oh yeah and also as you go, you're all saying about I'm gonna to have to take all these off and all the batten or uh, the nail holes. So what I've done is I've just put a couple of clouts over the ones that are poking out so nothing comes through. Mixed reception on the holes, but I'm not too worried about it. As someone did point out, the holes are gonna be on top of the the uh, the rafters, so and because I've got a bit of a sag in the felt, all the water should run down the, the middle and not go anywhere near the holes. But just to be safe, I put a couple of clouts on it. I know it takes a little bit of time, but pocket with a few clouts in there, I'm not too bothered. Now that I've finally got this sorted and got the spacing sorted, let's start cracking on with this, eh? Crikey, I tell you what, we got a fair old chunk done. 
I really do have to have a tidy up. Yeah, we've got a fair old chunk done. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Got a fair old chunk done there. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I've come up to the valleys. Now, I'm going to jump up there and want you guys' opinion on what to do next. Right, so here we are at the valleys of the dormers. So what I'm thinking, opinions please, down in the comments. Right, so what I want to do is I want to use valley tiles going down. I don't like the uh, just the normal valley with the gap where you put the cuts on either side and muck it in. But I just like the idea of a valley tile going in there. Now, I've never put valley tiles on before. I've done normal valleys plenty of times with those fiberglass strips that you put down, put a, a batten, probably one here and one here on that valley and then it goes in between. I've done that before, but like I say, I'd rather have valley tiles. If I can't have valley tiles, then I'll have the, the dry cut ones. With the battens, do I have battens coming in and then cut them at a 45 and then coming off this way? Do I butt them up? And I know that you shouldn't put nails straight through into the valley in case any water comes down. You don't want it dripping down because it's going to be in there. You want to be sort of 50 mil either side, something along those lines. And then at the top, I can't muck down the ridge. I have to have these stupid vented ones, which again, I don't like, but I have to have them. I believe you lead over the top. I'll have to double check the drawings. I'm pretty sure it shows me having an actual valley and then lead over the top, but I want I don't want that. I want the valley tiles. Comments, advice down in the, uh, in the comment section, please. It'd be greatly appreciated. But my thoughts are I'm going to bring the battens up, butt them up against, against each other at a 45 degree angle and then come along this way. That's the plan. But if you guys let me know otherwise, I'll be appreciated because you guys, since I've started this roof, you've come up with a lot of helpful tips for me. You've been, you've been real, a real help on this roof. So... I'm going to dedicate this roof to all you lot when it's finished because I reckon you lot have done more than I have really. But yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty good at the moment. Again, another question. Do I line the tiles up on here with the tiles on the roof? As in, where the button comes in, do I bring it along level with that button? Please, in the comments. Greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Right, so yeah, homework for the weekend. If you could all let me know down in the comments, it would be greatly appreciated. We'll leave it there for this week. If, you've, uh, if you're new to the channel, I've got plenty more videos like this on my channel. Link down in the description for a playlist for this house that we're building. So with that being said, leave a like down below. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. So have a good weekend and take care. Enjoy.